Four years ago, I went to Hawaii with Jess, a good friend of mine. We saw all sorts of things. It was now late at night, but the adventure wasn't over. We were headed to Haleakala, Maui's highest mountain, to watch the sun rise from above the clouds. Okay, so between you and me, we're going to Haleakala to uh, look at some stars. We may have borrowed some of the hotel pillows and stuff, just in case we're too tired to come back and we have to, like, emergency sleep in the car or something. Sun rises around like 5.30, so Jess will have plenty of time to get to the wedding after getting back to the hotel, because he has to be there at like 9.45 or so. Should be quite the adventure. I got uh, water for really large things of water. Oh, it, the engine's not on. Oh, okay. You just gotta turn the key, yeah. As we drove higher, I looked up some information about Haleakala. So it turns out Haleakala is 10,000 feet in elevation. I did not anticipate that. Just for reference, the elevation at Upper Yosemite Falls is 6,500 feet, and at Yosemite Point it's 6,900 feet. This is 10,000 feet. We're going from sea level to 10,000 feet. That's a lot. But this might be a bad idea because, like, the fact that I've been sick the whole time. <laughs> like it felt too sick. We are now going through some clouds. Back when we came here, you could enter the park at any time without reservations. We have just arrived. We're about 7,000 feet in elevation, so officially higher than any point we were at in Yosemite, as far as I know. And it's freaking cold outside. Thankfully, Jess came prepared. He brought this confusing windbreaker. It's not going to be enough for me to stay outside, but it'll be enough for me to set up a camera. And uh, we've got blankets, pillows, some warm clothes. We should be good to go. Time to get some time lapses. All right, we are at a parking lot near the top of the mountain. Definitely about 10,000 feet now. There are some weird animal sounds. I think they're birds because I heard one go by really quick, but it almost sounds like... That, I bet... Whatever bird that is, it's something like a mix between a dog and a bird. But anyway, I'm gonna take some star time lapses, and we're gonna cozy up in that warm car with that blanket. All right, let's do this. As the stars twinkled above us, we sat in the warmth of the car. Up this high, the air was definitely frigid. Eventually, dawn came, and the sun began to rise majestically above the clouds beneath us. Now, we made our way down the mountain, seeing beautiful views of the sea of clouds in the morning light. I would say that that was a fairly successful trip to Mount Haleakala. That is an incredibly high mountain. Now to return to the land of plentiful oxygen. <laughs> Hours of freezing my butt off for a 15 second time lapse. <laughs> Worth it! <laughs> It was a calming and beautiful drive back down the mountain. As we got lower in altitude, we began seeing more greenery, some of which looked like it was from a completely different state. It's funny seeing lots of plants, like uh, a bunch of pines or spruces or whatever, I guess just pines, and like stuff that looks like sage, at least as we pass by in the car, and then remembering that you're still on a tropical island. <laughs> it's crazy. Like I was looking at one of the hillsides and it looks like Montana. Now we saw vegetation with purple and red flowers and a rainbow in the distance. Today I would be flying out on a red eye, but before that, there was one more thing I wanted to do. After we had gotten back in town and had lunch, I grabbed an Uber to a state park not far from our hotel. I 
figured I'd do one last minute adventure at Ayao Valley State Park. I took an Uber here. Gates closed at 6 p.m. Cell reception is spotty. Not sure how I'm getting out, but look at these incredible mountains. Jeez. I think the park closes in six minutes, but uh, I'm still gonna wander around. I don't know if they actually kick people out at six or if you just can't come in at six because the dude at the gate seemed more than welcoming. This is the Ayao Needle. Actually, I guess it's pronounced Iao. Iao Needle. I keep seeing that in pictures and it's absolutely gorgeous. Wow, this is really cool. I kind of Wish I came here earlier, but I'm glad I still got to see it on my last day. There's something so magical about these mountains. Maybe it's just because I've seen it in movies and films and TV shows, but God, there's something mystical about them. The way the fog rolls through them and the sunlight sort of shines and makes it glow, and just like the shape of them, kind of reminds me of Chinese paintings a lot. Incredible. So I guess the proper name is Kuka Emoku, the Yao Needle. This is the top of one of the short trails. If I'm able to, I saw a trail down there that also goes to the river. I think some people are swimming in it even. So I might go check that out really quickly too. God, this is beautiful though. Wow. It was absolutely stunning seeing the fog roll in between the prehistoric looking mountains. But now, I hike lower into the valley to check out the river. All sorts of tropical leaves surrounded me, including monsteras. There is actually a wedding proposal. Actually, I think it's a wedding photograph session because it looked like the bride was in her dress already. Some sort of wedding thing going on down there and uh, I didn't want to interrupt. My God, this is beautiful. Look at all this. Well, I might sit around here a bit before getting an Uber or if I need to call in Jess because the data signal's here spotty and then I will get some food. I took a moment to rest and enjoy the views around me. The clouds swirled above the mountain peaks. And the rivers flowed rapidly beneath. emitted a coolness into the air. As the sun set, it gave the clouds above the valley an orange tint. Okay, I have miraculously found an Uber. So now it is time to go get some food. I'm thinking of Vietnamese place that's back on the way. I've had lots of Hawaiian. I would love to have more Hawaiian, but there was so much of it at the uh, luau last night. I don't know, every time I've eaten it, I've been sick and it's been delicious, but I just like, I don't want to ruin it because I am sick when I eat it. I want to come back and eat it when I don't have like a sore throat, when it doesn't hurt to swallow, etc. And also I just, I'm a little bit strapped for time. It is about almost seven and I should be ready to head out to the airport around 8.40, I think. Uh, maybe even earlier, because I don't know how security is going to be. Apparently lots of people get red-eye flights. So same thinking as I am, I guess trying to spend as much time in Hawaii as possible. There's something so nostalgic and yet at the same time unfamiliar about hiking through this beautiful, beautiful valley. 
as like the clouds roll in and it's turning to evening, you can hear the bugs in the distance. It's sort of this unfamiliar feeling that comes with walking around at dusk, especially in an unfamiliar place. Very familiar with that feeling when we're backpacking, but at the same time, the sounds of the crickets are so familiar, even though they're different from the sounds of the evening and nighttime back home. And it's like, I don't know, there's just something really nice about it. That's the depth of my thoughts. It's not really anything life-changing or anything. That, I mean, I, I just came to Hawaii for fun, you know, for pleasure. My friend invited me and I've never been, so I was like, now's the time to do it. But still, this is a nice ending. I finally got a ride to a Vietnamese place not far from the hotel, where I indulged in a warm, life-giving bowl of beef pho. That's a phenomenal meal. You know, I probably should have made Hawaiian food my last meal, but I kind of see the luau yesterday as the actual last meal. And this is just the day where I'm taking it easy before I fly out, but pho is just like, it's always a good, solid choice, like up there with pizza. And it had like raw beef being slowly cooked by the broth, beef tripe, beef tendon, which is always like so soft and gelatinous. Nothing special, I could get it in Ohio, but it's just fantastic. Now to get the Uber back to the hotel. Now, I relaxed and digested as I waited for my ride. I know I didn't film it, I should have, but this reminds me a lot of the, uh, the neighborhood that my Airbnb was in the first night. Just random suburbs. It was back to the hotel, where Jess would drive me to the airport late at night. Well, this is it. Yep. At least for me. <laughs> you got like four more days. Something like that. What are you going to do? Oh man, I am going to relax. Probably gonna play a lot of Pokemon. Getting ready for the next tournament. You know how it is. <laughs> well, this is the decidedly anticlimactic ending to this video series nah. on Hawaii. Huh? Not anticlimactic. No. Think about all the things that you can film at the airport. Yeah. Yeah. I might not do that though. <laughs> I had had an amazing time in Hawaii. Even with being sick, it really left a deep impression on me. Someday, I would return. But until then, it was time to go home. Well, it's life safe. Yeah. Huh? Thanks for a great time. Yeah. Hopefully I don't miss my flight. If so, I'll see you tonight, huh? See ya. Well, that's it. Thank you, Jess, for planning a lot of the trip, for getting the hotels and stuff. Thank you to Jess's family for inviting me to the luau. Congratulations to Jackie and uh, Steve. And I had a wonderful time in Hawaii. And Jess, I'll see you back in Ohio. See you around. That was the end of my journey, but there's still one more Hawaii vlog to look forward to, which tells the story of my first day here. Until then, be sure to check out my new vlogs on my personal channel. Thank you so much for watching.